in Maine. Well, you know, Burger King was one of the first cookie cutter restaurants that said that you could have it your way. <laughs> Any way you want it, you can have it. Okay. You want onions, you got onions. You didn't want onions, you didn't get onions. Have it your way. So I will refer to that by talking about uh, uh, this particular woman that was in the Bible who was the epitome of having it her way. Now this is not to pick on the ladies in the house. Not at all. But to point out what un holy and satanically influenced thinking in your mind and all the destruction in which it can do. And it is not our example, because our example is Jesus Christ. Philippians 2 and verse 5. Philippians 2 and verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So automatically, you got a lot of work to do to put his mind in your mind. So the woman I'm going to talk about, you may have heard her, heard her, you may even refer to some ladies by her name. And her name is Jezebel. Jezebel, she was King Ahab's wife. And he was king over the ten northern tribes of Israel. Israel had split up then. You had Judah, the Jews on one end, on the south side, and, and the rest of the area, uh, Israel, whose capital was uh, Samaria, on the north side. And Jezebel was not just no ordinarily, ordinary woman. And why she came to marry the king of Israel is that uh, Ahab had a great relationship with Tyre. And this relationship he had was with their king. So Jezebel was a Phoenician princess. Yes, she was. But she worshipped the Baal mm -hmm. and the Asterisks. Mm -hmm. And she also, when she got married to Ahab, she enticed him to leave his God Preach. and start worshipping her God. And he did so. He followed in the footsteps of all the rest of the kings of Israel. And that's why they're scattered around the world to this day. They don't know who they are. So he did the same, just like his forefathers. But she was also responsible for all of Israel, just about all of Israel, to worship the Baals and the Asterisks, which they had temple prostitutes. I never did could understand that. <clears throat> you you uh, elicit the services of a prostitute in order to worship your God. That just seems rather jackass backwards. Mm -hmm. Teach. So she even maintained what they call guilds or organizations of these false pagan prophets. She had 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asterisk. And she killed every one of God's prophets she could lay her hands on. <laughs> until there was only a 100 of them still left alive. And they was saved by the prophet Obadiah, yes. who hid them in the cave and fed them there. And could you imagine, now these are millions of folks there. You know, you got to think of these are the ten tribes of Israel, and there's millions of them. So now you're only down to 100 preachers. <laughs> and they got to be hid away in the cave. Teach. And she also had another man killed just for his vineyard. He had a very nice vineyard, and her husband lusted after that vineyard. And wanted the man to sell it to him, but he, he didn't want to sell it. So Jezebel knew that her husband wanted this vineyard, and he was just so broken hearted that he couldn't have it. So she cooked up a lie and had the man stoned to death. <laughs> and she delivered the vineyard over to her husband. And that was just some of the, amongst the, the, the uh, greedy and evil things she did. Because she wanted it her way. Wanted it her way. 
she tried to control all the aspects of life her way. And as far as she was concerned, Burger King was on the line. Preach. I can have my burger any kind of way I want, and you better give it to me. Of course, at the end of all of this, the, the Lord had her to meet her end in a, in a horrible way. And, and after she was killed and fell over the back of the wall, the dogs came and ate her up. And the only thing left of her was a skull and her two feet. And then thereafter, her husband got his too. <laughs> so this is the classic example of having it your way. Mm -hmm. Having it your way. Mm -hmm. Selfishness mm -hmm. and control, no matter who it hurts mm -hmm. or who must be hurt Preach. in order for you to have it your way. Mm -hmm. Your burger any way you want it. Although, your burgers is coming only one way. <laughs> you can't have it your way. Teach. <laughs> and as Christians, having it your way won't work. Because we have accepted, and before God and everybody else that was responsible, the Lord Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Amen. And we promised him at that time that we was going to do it his way. Preach. Amen. Philippians 2, verse 3. And this is the part, because he always wants us to be changing more towards him, not more towards ourselves, and not trying to make this uh, go in line with what, what we think, and you, it has to go in line with what God is thinking. Mm -hmm. So Philippians 2, and verse 3, it kind of gives you an understanding of what he's talking about. He said, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in loneliness, loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Teach. That has the essence of humility. The problem is, if you are doing it your way all the time, and you, whatever you say is right all the time, and whatever you think is right all the time, you're probably resisting the Holy Spirit from guiding and directing your life. Teach. Mm -hmm. Teach. Mm -hmm. And just in case you still think you got some right in you, mm -hmm. I got some right in me, mm -hmm. this book, God tells us what kind of right we have. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah 64 and verse 6. He said, your righteousness is like filthy rags mm. to me. Preach. He said, you all burdened down with your sins and they ever before you. And you stink. So don't get up on your hind legs talking about you're so good. And that you know the way. You have to be led the way. Through the spirit. Through the word. To our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And let it direct us all the time. Amen. Because at the bottom line, our resistance, you'll find humility or the lack thereof. And our examples of Jesus and Moses, as the list goes on and on down the line of the mighty individuals of God, they were humble. Humble. And they showed great humility like Abraham. And Jesus did it from his throne in heaven. And it's all in the book. Philippians 2 and verse 7. Philippians 2 and verse 7. He says, instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born a human being. Amen. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross for us. So we don't have a right to do it our way, you know, because our way and ourselves don't belong. 
to, to, you, to yourself. Teach. So sometimes if we're not careful, we can get a little caught up. <laughs> yes, we can. We get a little caught up in our own self-worth. Then it could be sometimes in the form of bragging. Preach. You know, folks brag. Preach. About how well they can do it. Some folks even want to put God in it a little bit. You know, talking about, they bragging about the blessings they have. You know, and they're really just bragging. And how well their family is doing. As opposed to someone else who may be struggling a little bit in that area. And on top of that, they may not be doing as well as they think they are. And when we brag, when folks brag most of the time, they don't brag to folks that they know that is doing better than them. They brag to people they know that's doing worse than them. Teach. Not doing as well as they are doing. So, you know, when folks brag, and this is let you know just how rotten that is, they, they are bragging down to folks. They ain't bragging up to folks. You ain't going to brag to somebody got more than you. They're going to tell you what, what you got ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got it. And then you go away with your tail between the legs and the head. Preach. Preach. So you can see that sometimes people want to take the generosity and the merciful blessings of God to take a little praise for themselves. Just like the song you were singing, praising to God, because he deserves all the praise and all the glory. Amen. Because you couldn't take your next, next breath unless he had designed that you had it. It is the same way when sometimes when folks get a little constructive criticism come their way. Now everybody is going to have to have some constructive criticism, and it is how that constructive criticism is given. Jeez. If it is given humbly and mercifully, taking into account the person's feelings, so nobody likes to be criticized. I'm here today. Teach. But sometimes uh, God says, if you do it right, you have gained a friend. Preach. Yes. Preach. But if you have done it wrong, you're going to have to watch your back. <laughs> And many times we don't do it wrong. Because right. we by the time I, I always wanted to tell you this. <laughs> Preach. Yeah. I'm tired of your no good self. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> I mean and, and the other person, they're ready, the, the ones that they're really doing all they criticizing, they can't take criticism themselves. Mm. Oh no, they can't take it. They ready to argue you down and fight you to the death. Mm -hmm. You know what they say. The nerve of you trying to criticize me. I remember what you used to do. It was much worse than what I did. And, and then if I did anything, even if it was just a little bit wrong, it didn't even compare anything to what you do. Because I remember all the wrongs you have done. So don't come here telling me nothing. Mm. <laughs> and so, and it goes on further than that. If they have wronged somebody, <laughs> if they have done somebody a dirty deed, or put them on blast somewhere, there will be no apology. And if it is, it would be weak and insincere. Teach. Sorry. And they really hate doing it because they know that ego of theirs is going to take a severe blow. Mm -hmm. And and they're what they're trying to do is to protect it at all costs. But we can't have it both ways. We can't have it both ways. In other words, there's no such thing as a Burger King Christianity. There's no such thing as that. Have it your way. It is the Lord's way. Preach. Yeah. Preach. I know at times we, we, we seem to forget a little bit. And the Lord had explained that metaphorically. Turn, turn with me, if you got your Bibles, to Romans 14, verse 6. Starting in verse 6. 
And God a lot of times uses uh, food. You see, everybody can understand food. Amen. Everybody loves food. Amen. Everybody needs food. Everybody don't eat food. So he says, starting in uh, verse 6, breaking into the middle of the thought, he said, those who worship the Lord on a special day do it to honor him. Those who eat any kind of food do it to honor the Lord, since they give thanks to God before eating. And those who refuse to eat certain foods also want to please the Lord and give thanks to God. Preach. For we don't live for ourselves, get this now, or die for ourselves. If we live, it is to honor the Lord. If we die, it is to honor the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Amen. So you don't belong to your way. You belong to his way. When we confess that he was our Lord and Savior, and you was baptized, laid on the hands, and received the gift of the Holy Spirit, your way ended right then and there. You're on a pathway until you draw your last breath trying to do it his way. Preach. And every time your way pop up, you need to be convicted so you can repent of it before you go too far. And the real point of all of this is to get you kingdom ready. Yes, Lord. Is to get you kingdom ready. It is our job as ministers, as pastors of the gospel, Preach. to tell you this. And we don't want to miss out anything that's going to help you to, to live a life that's going to please your God. Amen. Because on top of that, we are held responsible. Mm -hmm. So that's why he says in the book of Isaiah 58, he said, Spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Preach. And tell my people of their sins. So they can get themselves together. So they can come to me so I can heal them. Because you can't do it alone. But you have to recognize that you have it. And then you have to ask God to help you with it. And he will help you with it. Probably not in the way you think, you know, abracadabra, poof, it's gone. <laughs> I sure would like that. <laughs> but even getting back to uh, back to the to the part that we were held responsible, that was one of the reasons why I kept running. I didn't want that. I didn't want to be responsible for no, every man for himself. Preach, my father preach. Himself. Hebrews 13 and verse 17 says it best. And not that any spiritual leader is some tyrant that you have to bow down. We are your servants. And anyone that's in this position don't think otherwise that people are there to serve him. Well, he's going to have to answer to Jesus about that. He says, obey spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls and they are accountable to God. Now you can see why I don't want to be accountable for nobody but myself. Preach. Because <laughs> I, I couldn't trust y'all. <laughs> y'all going to send me to hell <laughs> and then y'all get in and I'm left out <laughs> he said give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow right. that would certainly not be for your benefit James 3 verse 1 and this is the truth this is the truth not many of you should come should want to become teachers my fellow believers. Because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. Preach. Amen. So we have to, whatever is dished at us, we got to take that. We got to take it on the, on the chin. You got to have thick skin. A lot of it, you got to let it go in this ear and out the other. Or, ordinarily, you wouldn't. Somebody might be on the floor before it's over with. <laughs> James 5 and verse 9. Don't grumble. James 5 verse, verse 9. Don't grumble about each other, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door. Preach. Now some folks might say, well, I don't see Jesus standing at the door. <laughs> oh, yes, he is standing at the door. And, and let me tell you 
when the Lord comes back for you. That's when you breathe your last. Mm -hmm. Some folks uh, walk around, well, I'll straighten up when I see that the Lord is coming back. It's going to be too late. Teach. It's going to be too late. Because when he comes, when you draw your last breath, then that means you're done. You have gone as far as you could go. And your desire is to go further. Continue to strive, as Paul said, continue to run that race. Because we got to be like him to be in the kingdom. Preach. He ain't going to have us in the kingdom. We're going to be like him in the kingdom. <laughs> and think about it. Would, would y'all want y'all in, in the kingdom? Oh, no. <laughs> and especially with all that's happening in the world today, all the things that's going on, even the things our president of the United States is doing, he's preparing the way for the Lord to return. He's doing his job, whether he knows it or not. Teach. And it is especially for those who confess that Jesus is their Lord and Savior. Because the world do not understand. They don't. They don't. They don't know the meaning of all of this. Because it is spiritual. Spiritual. So they cannot know because they are not his. They have not been called yet. Preach. They get their turn. Because he's a fair God. All those that died that didn't know the Lord, they'll get a chance to know it. Amen. That's for another sermon. Break that down to see how that works. <laughs> but oh yeah, it works. Because the Lord, he said, I'm not a man that I should lie. Mm. I don't have to pull tricks. Jeez. He said, I can do anything I want to do. And he can do anything he want to do. And everything he does is right. Teach. So for the folks out there in the world, Burger King is over 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They can have their burger any way they want. But for us, we don't have a menu like that. We can't have it our way. We have to accept what the Lord will set before us. Amen. Teach. Amen. Teach. And we need to accept it with joy yes. and thanksgiving. Yes. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen.